Hi everyone. Welcome to our class on lines. So in this class, what I'm going to show you how to do is drastically improve your line work with just a few simple steps. So with this nail tip here, you can see if you look closely, the lines are thick, they're messy, they're not precise, they're just big balled up messes. Over on this picture here, the lines are fine, they're thinner, they're more precise, they're a little bit sharper. So we're gonna quickly take you through the steps that you will need to do to improve your line work. I'm not gonna make you an artist, but I'm gonna show you little things that you can do that will give you immediate results in your work. So the first thing that you need are a good set of brushes. So I'm going to start off by comparing these three brushes. So if you look at this brush here, the bristles are a little bit thicker, but the length of the brush is quite good. If you compare these other two brushes here, you're going to notice this one here is a little bit longer and this one is a little bit shorter. When you're doing line work, I find a shorter brush is perfect. This one will do a nice job, but in order to get a line that goes from tip, from top of the tip to the bottom of the tip, I find this length of brush works so much better. So what if you only have this type of brush where the bristles are a little bit thicker? You can separate your bristles and you can cut a few of them out if you need to. I do that quite often. Um, I'm gonna show you here with some striping brushes that I have. So this is how my striping brush was purchased, how it first came out. And then over time, I just began to cut out some bristles to get a nice finer line than this one here. So again, I could use this brush to do my lines, but I find it's just a little bit too long. So ideally, you want a brush that is about this length. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to work on our nail here. So step one, I'm going to apply my color. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cure that for 30 seconds in our LED light. So what I've used there is just a gel polish. It doesn't really matter what you're using as far as your gel. Um, you can use gel polish, you can use gel paint, you can use any type of gel. So we're gonna wait for that to cure. We're gonna do two coats and I'm using Lexio, which cures for 30 seconds in an LED light or two minutes in a UV light. So coat one is done. We're going to do another coat. So we've got coat number two done. We're gonna go ahead and cure this as well. Now, while that is curing, I'm going to take a little bit of paint out of my pot. Now, I used curable paint, so I use gel paint. If you don't have gel paint, you can also use acrylic paint. It really doesn't make a huge difference. I'm just gonna show you here. Put a little bit on my palette, and I'm gonna show you how to load your brush. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our nail tip here. So this is now cured. There is one very, very important step that we must do before we can begin to paint on a nail. So gel cures with a dispersion layer. This dispersion layer is very slippery. 
and your brush is not going to stay where you put it. It's going to slide all over the place. So we need to do one of two things. We can use a matte top coat or if you don't have matte top coat, you can wipe off the dispersion layer. So I'm going to use a matte top coat. When you wipe off the dispersion layer, there's little bits of uncured gel that does come off on your wipe. And so if you need to wipe off the dispersion layer, an option that you can do is an extra really thin layer of your color. And then you can wipe the dispersion layer off and you don't have to worry about losing any of the color in the gel. You're not going to have little bald spots or anything if you make sure that it's really well covered. So in order to, oh, I'm going to wipe off the dispersion layer of my mat and make sure that it's really nice and matte. And this is going to keep my brush from sliding all over the place. Okay, so we're just going to let that dry. So while that dries, I'm going to show you how to load your brush. And you can do the same if it's gel polish. You're just going to roll your brush in there a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to show you on the white here. You can see how much product is on that brush and I'm also not putting the color all the way up into the ferrule of my brush here. That just makes a mess of your brush. It causes your bristles to open up so never get product all the way up into the ferrule here. You want to keep it about halfway down. So we've rolled our brush in the paint. Now you want to make sure that you don't have a little dollop of paint like this on your brush. If you do that, you're gonna make a mess when you go in paint. You also don't wanna lay your brush completely flat and pull a line straight across because again, you're gonna make a mess. So you wanna keep the product on the brush as thin as your brush is. And we're gonna do nice, short, little strokes and you want to take your time so I'm going to start in the middle here and I'm going to about gauge where the center is and I'm holding my brush at about a 45 degree angle to my tip and I'm going to do short strokes So we're just doing short little strokes. And don't worry that the color is so much lighter that doesn't matter at this point. What we're looking for is a nice straight line. So I'm just doing light little touches. You can see that my brush is staying straight. Okay, so now I've got my line and I need to darken it. So I'm gonna take some more product, put some more on my brush, and now that I've got my baseline done, I can just go along and darken it. And in this case, we're still gonna do shorter strokes but you can see where you've left off and we're just going all the way down So that's line one. We're going to do a couple more lines. And you never want to be in a hurry when you're doing your line work. Also another thing you need to make sure that you're doing is anchoring your hand. 
You don't want to come in and try and paint this way because you have no control over where that brush is going to go. So you use your pinky and you're anchoring your hand so that it's nice and steady. So again, nice, thin, short little movements. It's precise and sharp lines. Now, if you follow all of these tips, you're going to dramatically improve your line work. So I need to thicken that line just a little bit, give it a little more depth. So I'm gonna start down here, pull my color through, hold my brush at a 45 degree angle, And you can also rotate your brush because you can see where you need to add a little bit more paint on your brush. So I can turn it around because I've got no more color on this side, but I've got lots of color on the other side. So a little goes a long way. When I'm loading my brush, I actually leave it in the pot and I wipe it off around the rim. But for the sake of you seeing what I'm doing here, I'm just pulling my color out. We're going to do another line right about here. And if you make a mistake, you can always wipe it off. That's the beauty of gel. Gel stays where you put it until you cure it. And so if it's not cured and you don't like how it's looking, you can just wipe it off. And you also, because you've worked on a matte surface, you can Wipe it off however many times you'd like. So we're gonna practice, practice, practice. Again, you don't have to be an artist. You can use gel polish as well and do the same technique for loading your brush. I just find that if you're starting out to do line work, it is much easier if you start with a paint. Gel polish is a little bit trickier to work with. Paint is so much easier. And like I say, if you don't have gel paint, then go with acrylic. So next we're going to do like little diagonals. So I'm gonna hold my brush this way and I'm gonna kind of map out where I want it. I think I want it here. So I'm just laying my brush down to see where I want the line. And then I'm gonna angle it at a 45 again. And go all the way down. So now I have to make sure I get it at about the same spot and the same angle. So again, I'm laying it down so I can see and we're going to pull it down. And this one we have to go over a few more times. And we're going to do another line underneath. So you always want to try and make sure that they're spaced out the same, even. So many people are afraid of lines, but if you follow these simple little steps, you will improve your work. So now we are going to take a line and we're gonna go from this corner down here. So again, I'm gonna measure exactly where I wanna go. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna pull it down to here. 
And now we're gonna go in and we're gonna darken this up a little bit. So after you take this course, we're also going to work on flowers, how to do lines with flowers. We're gonna work on swirls. We're gonna do a bunch of neat little things. So now I need to make sure that I'm starting out at about the same spot. Okay. And we're gonna make another line underneath here. So I'm going to do the same on this side. I'm going to take another line and we're going to pull it up there. We're going to darken this one a little bit. It's way too light. And then we're gonna do a straight across. So the beauty of using gel paint is it doesn't spread out like gel does. Gel I find spreads more and you have to flash cure in between when you're do using gel paint. You can do the whole design and then cure at the very end. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to cure that for 30 seconds in our LED light.